Guys, let's, all 40 speakers will be speaking to these pillars. And by the end of the week, you won't have to rely on one, one thing that's going to help you do this. It's not truth. I know it because I fall, fell for that marketing messaging. I actually started using that marketing message and I started using that marketing message and said, if you only get on one stage, it'll change the game for you. And then I'm like, that's not true. <laughs> like if I get on that stage and I don't have products and if I get on that stage and I suck at talking and if I get on that stage and I'm not clear on the problem I solve, like it's not true. These are the pillars. And so I want you to know that this tour was intended to be in eight or nine cities in 10 days. But because of what's happening in our world, we're not able to do that this year. We will be doing it in September of 2022. So this tour is literally an all-star virtual tour taking you behind the scenes of all 40 plus of these speakers that all will speak into the six pillars and the foundation. And you will leave this week with 40 nuggets, a toolbox that will shorten your shorten a week will help you save months, years, or possibly a decade. Because many of these people will be sharing for the first time things that have worked for them. So let me do this before I bring our first speaker on. A lot of you have asked what's happening day by day. What's happening day by day? I want you to know what's happening day by day. Day one, today, I'm talking about your platform building magic. Like I'm talking about some things right here that have to do with your platform. I'm talking about the framework, the entire framework. Pat Quinn is gonna be talking about the greatest marketing tool that you have in 2022. Jesse Itzler is going to talk about how do you scale your business and scale you. And Emmett Smith is going to be talking about your unique genius, which falls into the clarity bucket. Tomorrow, I'll be back talking about some clarity and confidence. We're going to talk about how you set up your business. Most entrepreneurs don't set up their business correctly. There's so much tax savings that could be made and so much headaches that could be had if you set up your business correctly. What if you just had to focus on like one high ticket offer? Like how do you design your high ticket offer? A lot of you don't have high ticket offers. How do you build a, a Facebook group? How do you build relationships? And how has this guy become the highest paid athlete in the world in a single year? He made over $300 million in a single year. No other athlete has ever made more than $100 million in a single year. He made $300 million in one year and $200 million in another. I want to learn that. I want to learn how he went undefeated. This is day two. Day three, how do you build a course? With me, how do you choose the idea that works with Rory Vaden? How do you build a community with Bo Eason? How do you land podcasts, but how do you build your podcasts? How do you overcome being afraid of selling? How do you take $5,000 and build one of the biggest brands on the planet? That's day three. Day, day four. four. You, you got to have, have purpose, purpose if you're, you're going to build, build your platform. platform. Super, Super Bowl MVP. You've got to be able to create content that the world wants. What about landing consulting deals? How do you land consulting deals? John Gordon, one of the biggest authors on the planet, is going to talk about the two things that he did to launch his platform. Sean Cannell is going to show you how to use YouTube to build your platform. And Grant Cardone is going to share with you how to be omnipresent. How are you everywhere? Day five, what about writing your book? What about writing your book? What about a challenge? That's a stage that you can own. Doing your own challenge. What about Vilma Nunez? I'm so excited to have her here in digital marketing. Like, how do you do digital marketing? Man. Ads and advertising are very tough. How do you do paid media right now in this world? 
I'm so excited for Dame and John to talk about how do you build your personal brand? That's day five. And then day six, here's what's cool about day six. Like, where am I looking? Here's what's cool about day six. This will be the only day that I'm doing it on the road. I'm doing it from Dallas, Texas, because I'm speaking at an event in Dallas, Texas. So the team got me set up in a studio. This is a day where there will be people in the studio with me. Garrett White. Oh, man. Wait till you hear Garrett White. He's going to help you understand more clarity. How do you create products that are world-class, that change people's lives? How do you generate six figures in a day from your own events, not leaving your home as a brand new father? This is T. Harv Ecker's son. Ooh, Stormy's going to give a masterclass on how she's generated millions without spending a penny on Instagram, all organically, how to dominate Instagram. What do sales funnels look like in this new post-COVID world? If you don't know what a sales funnel is, what about mentorship? We're going to be talking about mentorship. That's relationships. This is how you scale. This guy has scaled one of the biggest brands in his industry because of relationships. And Trent Shelton's going to talk to you about overcoming your fear of communication. He's an introvert. He never thought he would be a communicator. That's day six, day six, day seven. We're almost there. This is Sunday. And I'm so excited about this day. My dear friend, let me tell you this. I want this right here, right here. Day seven, you will learn a strategy on day seven that will be the single greatest strategy that will allow you to build the platform as big as you possibly wanted in this world. You will learn a strategy that is the single greatest strategy that will allow you to build a platform as big as you want that's not being taught anywhere. I'm so excited because Daniel Grothy will be talking about the people you serve. Bethany Hamilton will be talking about the passion you have. And Tim Tebow will be talking about the greater purpose in your life. This day is going to be profound. It will be a shortened day because I know for a lot of families, it's a family day. This will be the one day that we have a little bit of a shorter run, a little bit of a shorter run. And here's what I want you to know. Those seven days will give you 40 strategies in building your platform. 40 strategies in building your platform. And then day eight, this day is all about you. The foundation of the platform is you. If you don't take care of you, your platform will not be sustained. Yes, this is a bonus day, but this is the day that is traditionally the highest attended day because Amy's going to talk about how her story opened up the doors for her to be and build her platform. John Acuff is gonna talk about all of the soundtracks that you constantly have in your mind and how to break them. Margarita Passos is gonna be talking about emotional intelligence and not to get the emotions the best of you. Jim Quick, New York Times bestselling author is gonna talk to you about taking control of your brain and becoming limitless. I'm so excited for all of my Gloria Mayfield Banks folks folks in in the the Facebook Facebook group group right right now. now. She's She's going to be be talking talking about about how to build build confidence. confidence. Alex Alex Morton is going to be talking about the catalyst to build your performance. Craig Ballantyne is going to be talking about productivity. This guy is more productive than most people I know on this planet. And he's going to give you the framework of how to do that. Jen Gottlieb, beautiful woman inside and out, is going to be talking about how she makes every dream possible. She's actually going to take us through the framework and the visualization of making any dream that you have in your heart possible. Holton Bugs is one of the greatest leaders that I've ever met. How do you lead your people and lead yourself? And Nick Santo, one of the biggest speakers right now on Tony Robbins, Russell Brunson's and many folks stages is going to talk about overcoming all odds, overcoming all odds, meaning your odds 
through his odds. This is on Monday. This day will go longer. It'll probably go two or three hours. And then the team asked me to do one final thing on Tuesday. On Tuesday, I will summarize all 40 speakers. I will summarize the five to six strategies that each speaker had in each of the pillars. And in 90 minutes, I will have you make a decision of which are the which strategy in each of these pillars are you going to focus on as you walk away from the platform tour. That's what I'm going to do on Tuesday, just so we can summarize everything and have you walking away with five to six strategies and a toolbox of 40 and a toolbox of 40. So that is what we're up to. Who's excited? What are you most excited about? Like, what are you excited about? I want to know that. I'm about to bring on our first folks today. We're a couple minutes behind. Thank you for being patient with me. For those of you that got here late, I, I, I want to apologize. We had technical difficulty. This week is literally going to have a reach of millions of people, millions of people through Facebook groups, YouTube channels, our groups, Zoom, our Spanish speaking pages and, and Zoom, our backstage. It's going to be reaching millions of people. And we had a technical difficulty on day one. And we're not going to allow that to get in the way from the impact that this week is going to have. And so what are you most excited about? What are you most excited about? Help me to know that down below. I want to know what you are excited about. Listen, here's what I want you to know. These speakers would cost millions, multi-millions of dollars to get all of them in the same room. And it's not doing that. Actually, none of them are making an offer this week because this week is a hundred percent of the profits. All of you that have chosen backstage and VIP, which you can't even get anymore, all of the 100% of the profits of this week are going back to charity, 100%. So while we help you build your platform, we're, we're going to make sure that we're building other platforms as well, which are the charities. And so these speakers have done, have done something, something powerful, powerful, and I, and I think, think, think that, that you'll, you'll appreciate, appreciate this. this. Uh -huh. They, they have, have donated, donated look, look at, at this. this. They have donated to, uh, their digital courses that they sell every day, their master classes and all of that, they've donated right over $25,000 that every single person that's a part of this week will have access to getting that. $25,000 of their courses their digital resources, their digital packages have been donated because they believe so much in the charities, the five charities that we're going to be serving. So let me just speak to this and I'm going to bring our first surprise speaker up here in just a second. I'm excited to be giving back to Grant Cardone's. His foundation serves parents that don't have fathers in the household. They support mom. Mothers who are supporting their kids on their own, especially with young men and, and young women. And they're an incredible foundation because he lost his father at a young age. And so it's an incredible charity that we get to support. We're, We're supporting, supporting a mental, mental health, health program, program with Children's, Children's Hospital. Hospital. Teen, Teen suicide, suicide rates are at an all-time high. All-time high. The news isn't telling you about, they're telling you about COVID. They're not telling you about the impact that it's having on our young people's minds and their hearts. Suicide is at an all-time high, and we're giving back to a program that's going to be supporting mental health for kids. We're giving back to one of the largest minority educational programs that has been built in the last year because of us giving them $250,000 last year because of your support. And we're going to continue to double down on that program for minority business owners. We're giving back to Model Citizen Fund, which provides backpacks throughout the United States, specifically in California. It's a good friend of mine and they give to the homeless a couple of hundred items to make the homeless feel complete, feel empowered. 
and we're giving back to the Maloof Foundation that I'm so excited about. We're giving back to the Maloof Foundation. They're helping end sex trafficking and bring rehabilitation to young girls across the United States. The Maloof Foundation is a powerful organization. They're incredible out of Utah and they're helping end sex trafficking. So I want you to know this week, if you've already made an investment in VIP or backstage, you've already made a contribution. If you supported getting the word out and you've tagged friends to be a part of this and you have other friends that have joined you and if you haven't tagged them in the thread that you're in, post it. You're getting people to support these. Our goal is a million dollars to be given and we will give it out on November 12th for many of you that make a decision to contribute in any way to these charities, on November 12th, we will be awarding the big checks to these organizations and letting them know how much we're giving to each one of them on November 12th. And it, the people who contribute this week, you'll get to be a part of that contribution day. And I'm really, really excited about it. Really, really excited about it. So I wanna hear from one person right now for a few minutes. I know Rich, Higaby is here with us. I know he's here with us. And I just want to hear from Rich today. Rich, I'm excited to have you. I know you're one of the organizations and charities that that is, you're the executive director for the Maloof Foundation. And I got the honor of being with you guys on a boat a couple of weeks ago and getting to start the raising of money. We won't tell them anything, anything yet, yet, Rich. So, so keep, keep everything, everything kind of secretive. secretive. But our, our goal this week is to give a million dollars back to these charities and these organizations. And, and Rich, I just wanted to hear from one of our charities today. today. We'll hear We'll hear from several of them through the course of this week, but I wanted to hear from just the three to five minutes before I bring on our next speaker, just what, um, just the impact of, of what the Maloof Foundation is having in our world. So will y'all give some love to Mr. Rich Higaby? Will y'all give him some love? Will y'all give Rich some love? And Rich, are you there? Yes, I am here, Pete. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I'm going to turn it over to you for just a few minutes here. So, Rich, thank you for being here. Share with everybody what the Maloof Foundation is all about. Well, Pete, first of all, I have to say you have me excited and charged up, and I hope everybody else is as well. Uh, when it comes to game changers in this world, you're definitely one of them. Um, I haven't known you for long, but in the short time I've known you, the impact that you've had certainly in the Maloof Foundation has been immense, and I won't share all the details about that. Um, I, I will say this, you know, my, in, in my career, I have uh, been the founder of or helped to start and create um, multi-millions of dollars in business to billions of dollars in business. And why did I choose to come and help head up restorative care at the Maloof Foundation? And I'll tell you the reason why. Um, one of the largest issues in our world today, and it grew exponentially during the pandemic, is child sex exploitation and trafficking. It is such a massive issue. And just to give you a perspective of what that looks like, first of all, there are millions of children that are trafficked each year. Here in the United States, a lot of us don't realize just how big of an issue this is here in the United States. We think of trafficking as something that happens internationally, that people kidnap somebody and then they sell them into sex slavery. Well, believe it or not, that actually happens less than what is happening here in the United States, right underneath our noses, in our neighborhoods, our next door neighbors, 40% of, of young, young children, children who are trafficked, who are trafficked are trafficked by their own family, family, by their own immediate family or somebody that is a close relative. So that's how significant of an issue this is. 90% uh, of cases go unreported. So there's only less than 10% that are actually being reported. And usually the way that they're reported is they're caught, caught through the legal system. And most people that are being trafficked do not even know that they're being trafficked. This is what happens in our world today. Used to take months for a predator to be able to find uh, a young child or uh, an adolescent and groom them and, uh, and then ultimately lead them into a world of trafficking. Today, because of social media, it can take 20 to 30 minutes. That's how quick it can take for them to set up a meeting and an appointment for a child or an adolescent that is high risk, 
that has likely suffered sexual abuse or some other type of major trauma in their life and they become very, very high risk. And predators are very good at finding out who these children and adolescents are. And many people are trafficked multi-generationally, which means their parents were trafficked, their mom was trafficked, or, or even their dad, because this happens amongst men. It happens amongst LBGTQ uh, uh, individuals as well, very, very high risk. So believe it or not, it's happening amongst all of us. Now, um, there are only about 700 beds that are available in the United States to help rehabilitate uh, adolescent kids or adult women that have been trafficked. And so what the Maloof Foundation is all about, just to give you a little bit of our history, uh, the Maloof Foundation is an organization that was developed about five years ago to really help end child sex exploitation and trafficking. And our focus is to be able to create three different pillars that we address this issue on a very broad scale. The first pillar is education. I encourage all of you to go to IamOnWatch.org and get trained about what trafficking looks like in our modern world today. It's very different than you would have thought. The second pillar is healing, and that is what I am focused on, is creating a restorative care center, a residential treatment program for young adolescent girls that have been sex trafficked so that we can provide a safe haven for them to be able to uh, be rehabilitated. And when I say long-term, this is anywhere from a year to 18 months that we will provide holistic alternative programs and therapy and, and all kinds of modalities to help these young adolescent girls to be able to be rehabilitated and be normalized back into the modern world uh, and be able to provide them with opportunities where they can get job skill training and ultimate placement in their career. That's where we want to be able to have the greatest impact. And the third pillar is justice. We are doing what we can to change the laws in all of the states in the United States. Believe it or not, there are many states that have laws that for anybody that is trafficked before the, between the ages of 14 to 18 years old, uh, um, the person trafficking them actually might spend a week in jail if they're caught. So that's gotta end. We've, We've gotta, gotta put a stop, stop to what's happening in the world today, and you can certainly help us to do that. And I love what you're doing, Pete, with, the, with your platform tour. It is absolutely remarkable. Entrepreneurs across the world are looking for causes to be a part of. I know all of you want to do something to make a difference in the work that you're doing. And, and certainly your, your business alone makes a difference. But when you tie into platforms like the Maloof Foundation and what we're doing to end child sex exploitation and trafficking, then we can have even a greater impact on the world. Now, I say this all from a very tender heart as a father. I have four daughters and uh, I've been very successful in life and in business. Um, my wife and I have, uh, have done everything that we can to provide a safe environment, setting up appropriate standards and rules for our kids. And lo and behold, our oldest daughter, who is now 26 years old at 13, was uh, sexually abused and took her down a very dark pathway. And ultimately, in a very white class, uh, high income neighborhood, she was trafficked right underneath our own noses, living in our own home. And, and I can tell you from personal experience that there are many, many people out there that are going through the same thing. And perhaps you listening, listening on this call are experiencing this with a close family member, a loved one, or maybe your own child. And I know that if we band together and we come together and we create a, a, a cause and a purpose and a platform, like we're talking, that we can have a drastic impact in what is happening out there with our children and with our adolescents. And ultimately, with those people that go on into their adult years uh, having to deal with the, the, the trauma that this is causing in their lives. And I'm very proud to be a part of it and excited about what you are doing, Pete, and uh, hoping that we can all have a larger impact together. So I appreciate you letting me come on today and wishing you the best on your tour. Hey, Rich, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hey, guys, will y'all give some love for Rich? Will y'all give some love for Rich? Rich, 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 Rich. I love it. I love it. I love it. Rich, thank you for being here and we'll be in touch. Thank you for uh, 
you know, being gracious with some of the tech difficulties we had today. And thank you for being here, sir. Thank you, Pete. Yeah. Good luck with everything. Hey, thank you. Hey, everybody. So we're at the we're at the, ha the halfway mark. And this is what I want to say. I see a lot of my backstagers. We've got thousands of people who are backstage and VIP. And what I want you to know is, is I, uh, as, as you're, you're getting here, here, I apologize. We had a technical issue because of just just it just happened. happened. And it's unfortunate. unfortunate. And I want to apologize. And I'm going to do a special session tonight for all of our VIPs, all of our backstagers. And I can tell you that session in itself will provide extreme, extreme, extreme value. So I apologize for the technical difficulties. We got started about 15 minutes late today. And uh, I just want to say that I'm sorry. Um, and I'm committed to making this experience over the course of the next week unbelievable for each and every one of you, whether you're backstage or you're not. So before I bring up our two speakers today, we're gonna make some audibles. You gotta make some pivots. Like a, a lot of people, lot think, of people think, here's, here's one of the biggest reasons here's, why here's people, one of the biggest reasons why people think and give up on what's in their heart. Is they, think, their heart. That it's a is they think that it's a linear path. If I do A, B, if I do C, a, B, C D, e, e, F, G, I'll get to the path, to the path that I want. And, and I'm, I'm not, not going to get into the details of my story, but my but I will give you the high level overview. My ki my wife and I thought that we were going to have four kids and we knew we'd have to adopt a couple because of health challenges. But we are committed to having a few on our own. And all I can tell you is the not so perfect plan is when you understand that when you go through life, it's not, not like, like a linear, linear path of A through Z. Z. And that's, that's not, not when you give up on your plan, when things are going well or when things are going great. That's not when you give up on your plan. When you give up on your plan is here in the pits, pit moments. Not the mountaintop moments or not the hiking moments, not the hiking moments, not the mountaintop moments. Those are the things that push you and propel you to want to go after the plan even greater. It's the pit moments that make you want to give up. Like I had a knot in my stomach this morning. Like I'm just being honest, a knot in my stomach. It's a pit moment. But what allows me to get over that pit moment? What allowed me to not only lose a kid, one that we had to make a decision that was one pound, three ounces, and we were told by doctors she wouldn't live to be a year. And I could go on and on. What was it in those pit moments that had us stick to the plan? It was having something that we were fighting for greater than ourselves. What were we fighting for? We were fighting for a family that we wanted to create, provide an amazing life, love and nurture, and give our kids something that maybe we didn't have, which was an incredible life. We knew what we were committed to. When you know what you're committed to, it makes the pit that much easier. And this week before I bring on one of the greatest speakers in the world, one of the greatest speakers in the world who understands how to scale a platform. And I'm going to ask him to riff however he wants today because we've had technical challenges. And I'm going to push me and Pat back to a later time. But one of the things you have to understand is what are you fighting for? What do you stand for? What are you fighting for and what do you stand for? Because if you're clear on what you're fighting for and who you're fighting for and the stand that you're taking on behalf of them, it makes you be able to come out of the pit moments and rebound and continue to progress back to the plan that you have in your heart. Today, Today I've been, been married 20, 20 years. years. Four, Four beautiful, beautiful kids. kids. We lost a kid and we were told we were going to lose a second kid. But that was the plan in our heart that my wife and I were committed to. So when the pit moments came, those pit moments came, we were able to get out of those pit moments. And you know what was a lot that helped us get out of those pit moments? Was other people who understood who had been there before us. Why do I want you to build a platform? Because you've been somewhere where somebody else is about to be. And you can help them get out of that place a lot faster than they can on their own. And so this morning, as I went back to this back room and I went outside and I had a knot in my stomach, I was reminded by a soft, still voice inside. Remember what you're fighting for. Remember what you're fighting for. 
You're fighting to help a million people build their platforms. You've compiled 40 of the greatest speakers in the world. Not one of them have been missed yet. Not one of them. If everybody misses you this week, you're okay. Just as long as they don't miss any of the 40. Remember what you're fighting for, Pete. Because I was like, let's just freaking, we'll just do it tonight. We'll, we'll, I, I didn't know what to do. But the thing that allowed me to be reminded is what am I fighting for? The most important question I'm going to ask you today is what are you fighting for? Are you, what are you fighting for and who are you fighting for? And tomorrow, if you're not clear on that, tomorrow you're going to get a lot clearer. But what are you fighting for and who are you fighting for? What are you fighting for and who are you fighting for? You got to know what you're taking a stand for. Because when you do, the highs and the lows, it's easy to get through the highs, but it becomes easier to get through the lows. And so today, I'm going to start us off by telling you, I'm fighting for, I have helped our clients in the last few years generate three quarters of a billion dollars. In the last 20 years, I've helped them generate just shy of a billion dollars. The majority of that creation has come in the last few years because I understand what it takes to build a platform. I am committed to helping a million entrepreneurs, nonprofits, and individual organizations build their platform to make a greater purpose on the world and in return, provide everything that it needs for those people building the platform. I'm committed to a million of you. A million of you building your platform, controlling the microphone so you can change our world. That's what I'm committed to. What are you committed to? I know this next guy is completely committed to doing big things in this world. He's done big things in this world. He's the owner of Marquee Jets. He's part owner of the Atlanta Hawks. The guy has done Ironmans and crazy experiences and built multi-million dollar or multi-billion dollar companies, been a part of billion dollar companies, married to one of the biggest brands out there, Spanx and Sarah Blakely, have multiple beautiful, beautiful kids, has become a friend of mine, a guy who pushes me and from a distance mentors me as I pay attention to what he's doing and the experiences that he's provided. And he's built an incredible platform. He's seen his wife build an incredible platform and he understands a thing or two about building platforms. And so I want y'all to welcome today to the stage, my good friend, Mr. Jesse Itzler. Oh, Jesse, Jesse's five minutes out. Okay, yeah, just joking, <laughs> just joking. Okay, okay, yeah, y'all, thank y'all for the laughs. I see you, Melissa. Um, yeah, that was a great intro, right? Didn't I just give Jesse the greatest intro? Yeah, Let, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're, gonna say, we're gonna pause on that. Let me come over here to the whiteboard while we're bringing Jesse. Whoops, yeah. I need help here, guys. Gotcha, gotcha. I need it facing that way so the cameras can see it too. Let's go right here, wherever we need to go. Is it supposed to be right here? Right on the edges. Do me one of those markers, Leaf. Here, just give me a black one. I just need a black one, Leaf. Move, move. So, let me tell you. One of the things that's, that's important, important to, to get, get clarity, clarity on. And we are gonna dive a little bit into this today, but there are, are literally some P's that you have to get clarity on in order to build your platform. These P's allow you to build a powerful platform. And when I talk about platform, there's three types of people building platforms right now. There are people building platforms that have ego and it's all about them. They want likes, they want followers, and they want to fulfill their ego and make themselves feel good. Not talking to that person. If you're that person, you can check out or you can think about a new way of doing it. The other people that are building platforms and unfortunately are controlling the biggest platforms right now are the people that 
are creating a lot of negativity, dissension, and fear in our world. They're definitely not here. I, they probably checked out within the first five minutes when I spoke a word of encouragement and blessing over all of you. And then there's a third type of person building a platform that's building a platform greater for something greater than themselves. And so one of the things that you want to get clear on this week is who are the people you are trying to serve? Who do you want to serve? Who do you want to serve? You got to get clear. What are the problems and the pain that they're facing? What's the problem and the pain that they're facing? Is it in their marketing, their sales, their mindset, their life's experience? What are they facing? Speak it in their language. What do they lose sleep over at night? I'm going to lose some sleep tonight. Think about the sleep I'm going to lose. Like, how do you speak, speak to, to that, that pain? pain? And then what's the possibility that you can provide to that? You see, all of this is about, about a purpose bigger than yourself. This week, we're talking about purposeful platforms. We're talking about purposeful platforms, platforms that actually make a difference in the lives of people, the lives of people. And so I know I gave him an incredible introduction, but I want to give that same introduction today because one of the guys who's built a platform, and Jesse, I want you to jam however you want around scaling and platforms and anything that calls to you right now before uh, we bring Emmett Smith up today. But I'm excited. This guy his scaled platforms. He's been a part of multi-billion dollar companies, Marquee Jets, the Atlanta Hawks. He's got an incredible wife, Sarah Blakely, who's built and will be with us in a couple of days, has built Spanx and just an incredible man, an incredible friend. Um, the experiences that he creates for himself, that he creates for his family, and that he even creates within his businesses. Like this guy has purpose and intentionality in all he does. And today, one of the greatest speakers in the world, I'm so excited for him to come talk to you and be kind of our lead speaker this week on the platform tour. Would you guys welcome Mr. Jesse Itzler to the platform tour? Give great it up for Jesse. Great introduction, Pete. Can you hear me okay? I hear you great, dude. I hear you great. I'm in, uh, I'm in Clearwater Beach, Florida. It's, uh, it's a holiday today. Uh, so my kids are off from school. We came down to Clearwater. And Clearwater is known for their, they have this amazing uh, rescue facility for sea animals. They're aqua the Clearwater Aquarium or is a rescue facility. And they actually shot the mo movie with the dolphin that has the prosthetic leg here at, in Clearwater. I was just on a walk on the beach and I saw all of these like huge orange buoys and guys that looked like they were in the Coast Guard, like they looked like they were marine biologists set up this crazy thing in the water. And I'm like, it's like a mile down. I'm like, I got to go see what they're doing. Like, I'm sure they're saving the whales. You know, like, I got to be a part of this. Like, what's going on? I walk all the way down there and uh, I asked the guys in these official sea suits, like, what's going on? And he told me they're shooting an Oscar Mayer Wiener commercial. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Freaked me out, man. Anyway, and then I was like, I got to get back. I, I, I walked too far. I'm coming on to talk to all these people. I got to, so I started running back. So it's an honor to be here. Uh, I only have one agenda today, and that is to provide value. So I got about 20, 25 minutes, um, and I want to talk about how I grew my platform. Um, um, and, I and I don't mean my platform, platform on social. social. I, mean I mean my personal platform, my personal, platform, my personal, personal brand, um, and the impact that I can have with it and how I choose to do it. But more importantly, share those tips that everybody can apply to your own individual life, whether you're in business, looking for a job, a mom or a dad, wherever you are in the journey. I want to make sure that everybody leaves here with takeaways that they can apply to their own life immediately. Before they, we do that, I just want to uh, share a quick story. Everybody has mentors and idols and role models and all that. And, and everybody has different relationships with their parents. But so, you know, I, I don't know. I, for me, my dad has been my hero and my mentor and my role model. He showed up at every event, sacrificed everything for me. And um, he's just been an amazing part of, of my story and getting me where I want to get to. 
and just loving me, man, and supporting me. But um, my dad doesn't remember my name. My dad now is 91 with Alzheimer's. 99% of the time I'm with him. He doesn't even remember my name. The other day I walked into the house and he said to me, I don't know who you are, but I know I love you. And I would spend, man, I would spend 24 hours in a chair next to my dad for the one minute, the one minute that my father had clarity. And for that 60 seconds that he remembered me, it would be worth anything to wait and, and get that clarity. And uh, the other day, last night, actually real time, I was at a wedding and it was my niece's wedding and my parents came in from Florida. It was in, it was in uh, North Carolina. And my dad was having a tough night, you know, and um, didn't know who I was. Usually I wear a name tag. So he sees my name. And at the end of the wedding, just when we were supposed to, to leave, I heard, hey, Jess, come here for a second. Out of nowhere. Come here. Come over here. I want to talk to you. And it was my dad. And I got that 60 seconds of clarity. And when we talk about platforms over the next couple of days and building a platform, you immediately go to, how do I get 7 million followers? How do I monetize my, no, no. Platform could be about one person, man. Platform starts at your house. It starts with the people closest to you. It starts with your story and how you use that, how you have an impact around your platform is what it's all about. And I just want to say, before I, I came up to talk to everybody today, I was nervous. I actually, I called my wife. My wife owns a company called Spanx. She was busy. I got her out of a meeting. I'm like, I'm talking before this group today and, and I'm nervous. And, and she's like, well, what are you nervous about? And I said, I'm nervous that people get, that, get something out of it. You know, like I'm not nervous for me. I'm nervous that I deliver on what Pete expects me to deliver. And I take this really seriously. Every time I use my platform, whether it's a meeting with my kids or whatever, I treat it like it's the Super Bowl, like it's the last time I'm going to get a chance to use my platform. Like, it, and and um, it just made me think about something I want to share with everybody before I kick into what I want to talk about today. It's you know only one person can be the richest, only one person can be the best looking, only one person can be the have the most followers, but anybody can care the most. Anybody can care the most. And I built businesses on caring the most. Like with my friends and my inner circle, caring oozes out of me, man. Like it just, it just does. And whenever I, I think about my platform, and again, I'm not talking about social, I'm talking about all my outputs, all my, my interaction with people, my meetings with people, how I treat my family, my one-on-one -on -one relationship with my dad. This is all part of me and my platform. It comes down to authenticity and it comes down to how I show up. And every year I, I pick one word that represents me for the year. And that could be change, spontaneity, um, newness, challenge. For the last three years, I've had the same word, that word soul. Like if I'm gonna do something, I'm putting, putting my soul into it. I'm pouring my soul into it. Otherwise, man, why even do it? If I'm working out with my workout partner, I'm putting my soul into it. If I'm coming here for Pete and this amazing kickoff that we're having, I'm putting my soul into it for 25 minutes. And that's all I can do. The chips are going to fall where they fall. People don't like me. It falls where it falls, but it's not going to be because of my effort. It's not going to be because I, I didn't show up. Like if you got to show up, man, man show, show up, up. be, be there. there, put, put everything, everything into it because, because you just never know what you're going to get out of it or what's going to come from it. So, you know, I always say you can't outsource soul. Customers feel soul. They, they feel it in your posts on social. They fear, feel it in meetings. You know, like it's, it's something that the universe rewards soul, you know, and you can't outsource it. So you have to pour everything into it. All right, let's get into what I want to talk about today. I've had a crazy journey as an entrepreneur. Um, I started off sleeping on, I don't want to spend a lot of time on it because I don't want this to be about me. But I spent a lot of time sleeping on couches between the ages of 19 to 24, friends that put me up, and ultimately went on to have 
really f- phenomenal success. And my definition of success isn't necessarily financial, though I was fortunate to have some financial success as well. To me, success is being good in the buckets that matter the most. Your relationships, your family, business, philanthropy, your wellness. Like if you're good in all those buckets, to me, that's success. If you if you over-index in, in your business and you make a ton of money, that's amazing. That just makes you rich in that bucket. I know a lot of rich assholes. That just makes you rich. Success to me, taking care of your parents when they get older, showing up for your kids' games, you know, having impact with your platform. That, that to me is successful. But how do you get there? So I had a company called Marquee Jet. Really excited for this session, Pete, because I'm going to share um, about seven. I have 15. I'm going to get to as many as I can of the principles that really were the foundation of how I built with my partner, Marquis Jet. And I thought I wanted to share today the non-Google stuff, the stuff that you can't just watch on YouTube, like the behind the scenes, bootstrapping, boots on the floor, ways that I built my platform. And whether you're a CEO or a parent or a college student, wherever you are on your journey, there'll be some of these principles that you can apply along your way, wherever you are. And um, what I love about what I'm going to share is I didn't read this in a textbook. This is stuff that's been proven over the years. And um, recently I was at a conference that Warren Buffett was at, and he said, you don't get rich quick. You get rich slowly. And the same is true with your platform. You, you You grow it slowly. And, you know, more people, more followers, more platform isn't necessarily better. Better's better just doing it the right way, authentically, based on your story, your experiences, what's important to you, your business, why why that's important to you. That in the long term is what's going to resonate the most, obviously, and have the most impact. So, all right, here we go. So these are the things that I did when I was 27 years old, 25 to 27 in my early 30s and still do them now that have really had an impact on, on helping me grow my platform in business and personally. The first one I already said, I care the most. I think that's a, that's the most important thing. We got to pour all of our soul into whatever it is we do. Number two, um, I go where the action's at. I go where the action's at. So, oh, these principles I'm going to share with everybody don't require money. They don't require a business degree. Anybody can do them. And they're, they're completely free. Um, but I go where the action's at. Um, When I was starting out at Marquee Jet, a company that we built, private jet company, we built the $5 billion in sales with no aviation experience, no no airplanes to start, no money. We grew it to $5 billion in sales and ultimately sold it to Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway's NetJets division. I used to always go where the action at. I didn't have a sophisticated way of getting leads. There was no internet. There was no, um, this is back in, in the mid 90s, late 90s. There was no sophisticated way to get leads. I had to go where wealthy people were that could afford time on private jets. And I heard about a conference called TED in Monterey, California, where wealthy people went, the TED conference. So I flew all the way cross country to the TED conference. And I realized when I got there, it was a 16 hour journey with all the connections and car rides that everybody had a credential. You needed a credential to get into TED. Nobody told me that. And I was like, man, how am I going to sneak into this thing? Like, I got to, you know, find somebody and pitch them on my company. And what am I going to do? So I went to the coffee shop, trying to figure out, like, how am I going to get into this conference where all the qualified people are sitting, thousands of them. And all of a sudden, a wave of people came into the coffee shop and they were buying lattes and muffins, lattes and muffins. And I was like, they're on break from the conference. They all had the credentials. So, so the, the next, next morning, morning, I woke up, up at five, five o'clock. o'clock and I went, went to the, the coffee, coffee shop, shop and I bought, bought all the muffins. muffins. I now controlled all the muffin inventory in Monterey, California, and I waited. Sure enough, two, two hours, hours later, the first wave of people come on the break and they're ordering, ordering lattes and muffins, lattes and muffins. And um, the gentleman behind the de- desk is like, I can give you a latte, but I'm sorry, we're all out of muffins. And the first customer is like, all out of muffins. It's like, yeah, they buys these lattes, they starts walking out and I stop them. I said, sorry, I overheard you. Well, I actually have an extra muffin if, if you want one. He's like, you have an extra muffin. I'm thinking to myself, I have like 200 of them in this bag that you can't see. 
And he asked me what I did. I said, oh, I'm here for the, for the, for the TED conference. What are you doing? He said, I'm here for the TED conference too. What do you do? I said, well, I sell time on private jets. He said, you got to be kidding me. I'm in the market for a private jet. And I, he said, do you mind if I sit down? I can learn more about your program. And I'm like, absolutely not. That's why I bought all these damn muffins, man. Sit down. He became my first customer. And this isn't a story about I'm a great salesman. I'm not. This is a story about me putting myself in a position where I can attract luck, where the platform already exists, going where the action is, going where it's hot, and, and, and taking advantage of it. Luck doesn't happen when you sit home. Sunday night when you watch the Kardashians, the universe rewards you when you put yourself in a position where you can attract luck. That could be the local signing up for the, the local running club, going to, you know, being a part of your church or synagogue or religion, whatever in your town. It's going to lectures, things like this. It's going where the action is and putting yourself in a position where you can make some moves. And wherever you are on your journey, when I started out, I was sleeping on my friend's couches, 18 friends put me up. I went to lunch at the Beverly Hills Hotel, like 20 something years old, young 20s. And I'm looking around at all the people, mogul after mogul, movie star after movie star. I'm sleeping on my friend's couch. I'm in the room. I said to my friend, are you telling me I could order a Diet Coke and a salad and sit here for five hours where all the action is? I don't need a hotel, a hotel room to be a guest in the hotel to be at this spot. He's like, no, that became my office. That was my office every single day. Now, I didn't like in, you know, interrupt people when they were eating, but I, my face got recognized. I would pop into meetings later on. You look familiar. Did you just have lunch at the bed? Yes. Like I became part of the action. So part of my journey of building my platform was just showing up where events were. You know, and started trying to like email or whatever, I would show up. Number two, no, well, number three, really. I DM people. What? I realized that I have a lot of layers. I have an assistant that looks at my emails and my phone and this and that, but I handle all my social. And I'm not comparing myself to, to moguls. I'm not a mogul, but moguls, very often they like to hold on to their own social and they respond to their DMs a lot. And I got a DM the other day from somebody, not the other day, but recently, who had an ad specialty company. They make T-shirts and hats for corporations. And he sent me something that said, hey, man, you don't know me. Send me your logo for this company I have called 29029. Send me your logo. I want to send you a bunch of merch. If you like it and you want to order anything, do it. If not, you got some great shirts and hats or whatever. I'm like, that's a no-lose. It's not a win-win. I don't love win-wins. Because Pat Quinn might win here and I'm in, he's winning more than I'm winning. I like no lose. That's a no lose situation. Roger that. Send them my logo. A couple of days later, I get this FedEx box with all this amazing gear in it for, with my company. He gets the account. I have friends in the business. He got the account because he DM'd me. So I'm a big believer in being proactive, which leads me to the next principle or the next little tip or strategy, the three minute miracle. Coach K, throw, uh, the Duke basketball coach, throws a basketball camp for guys 50, uh, 35 and older at Duke University. I've been going for 20, for 20 years, basically, uh, 18 years, I'm 53. So I've been going every year for 18 years. And the other day I sent him a text, coach, thanks for having the camp, it changed my life. I made some great friends. Just, I know you don't have to do it. Thank you so much. No need to reply, send. It took me 45 seconds. Now, the coach could do three things with that. He might share it with his team, like, look, we're having an impact. He might tell his wife. He might do nothing. But I now have permission building my platform. If and when I see Coach K, Coach, to go over to him, I sent you this DM. I'm not text. I'm not sure if you got it. I'm not coming out of nowhere. Who's the first kid he's going to hug? Kid. I'm still a kid. At, at camp, camp. Me. me out, out of 500, 500 people. people. Me. me. Now, now, that, that took me less, less than a minute. minute. If we invest three minutes a day and send a text, handwritten note, DM, or email to three people a day over the next hundred of uh, the next 30 days, we'll hit, we'll hit a hundred people. In the next year, we'll hit a thousand people. Now, I'm not saying they're all going to buy your product, be your best friend, invite you to the Oscars. It doesn't matter. One, we need one. 
We are one person, one referral, one sale, one relationship, one introduction away from changing the entire course of our life. We got to plant the seeds. When I think of my platform, and I still do this, I invest three, I invest 10 minutes now. You want to know why? 10, 10 minutes is 3,000 people a year. If you're consistent and you hit invest 10 minutes a day, that's 3,000 people. One way. I'm not asking for anything. I'm Pete Vargas, you know, I'm just hitting them. Unbelievable that you did this. You're a great dad. I know you're into uh, wake surfing. Here's a video on wake surf surfing. Uh, one way, not asking for anything. Of those 3,000 people, I guarantee you, man, over the next year, two years, five years, those seeds that you plant, I heard this the other day, some will get washed away. Some are going to get going to go bad, but some of them are going to produce. It's about being consistent. So I DM, I show up, I spend about 10 minutes a day. Next, I have a hot restaurant, a hometown restaurant. What does that mean? I have a restaurant that I go to where I'm the king. I know the, I know the maitre d', I know the host, I know the hostess. If I want to send friends there, sales rep, I can get a reservation whenever I want. Have a hometown restaurant that you can go into when you have a meeting. At, on short notice, you can send customers, referrals, prospects, family members with no problem. You build a rapport with, at a restaurant. Maybe you're a good tipper. Maybe you're incentivizing them. Whatever it takes, it's your restaurant. When you walk in, man, it's, it's hey, 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 you're the king. Because you're going to need it. You're going to need it. You're going to need it after meetings. You're going to need it when people come into town. Next, I compliment, I congratulate, and I console. The three C's. I say this all the time. If you heard it, I'm going to say it again. I compliment, I congratulate, I console people in my inner circle. We're talking about building our platform. How do we build our platform? We build it one-on-one -on -one combat to start. We build it authentically. I compliment, I congratulate, I console people in my inner circle, my kids, my staff, my customers. What does that mean? Hey, Pete Vargas, it's Jesse, and this is true. You're an unbelievable dad, man. I know you do all this. I know what you do. But what I respect most about you is how you how you do how you go through life as a dad. And I just want to tell you, man, as a friend, it's what I look up to you most about. Pete isn't on the cover of the Wall Street Journal. He didn't win the Super Bowl like Tom Brady and everybody's texting him. He's like, thank you. Thank you. He doesn't even know who's hitting him. I authentically reached out and hit Pete. On something that hits me and resonates with me deeply. He'll never forget it. I, I, so that I, I compliment, I congratulate Pete. Her one of your kids got into Duke University. Congratulate. If my son gets into Duke, I'd be on, I'm like, we're on, Sarah, my whole family's on cloud nine for you and you can soul. Man, I had one of the worst things happen to me that could happen to a parent. I get a knock on my door the next day. It's my friend, Dougie Fresh, the rapper. So what are you doing here, man? He said, when you get news like that, you don't call, you show up. If you have somebody in your life that's grieving and you don't reach out to them, they'll never forget it. So I complimented, I congratulated, I consoled. Guess what? I get referrals, started getting referrals. When something went wrong in my business, my customers didn't leave me. They stuck with me. That's the power of a platform. When people are rooting for you, Next, I built my life, and I'm going to be mindful of the time. I built my life resume. I built my life resume while I was building my traditional resume. What does that mean? It means that there's so much emphasis, you know, what's Googleable and what's not Google. You don't Google, get a hometown restaurant, send 10 DMs, go where the action's at. You, you know, you get platform, oh, buy ads, run this, build your email list. Of course, I get that. You got to do that too. But you got to do what everybody else isn't doing. If you do what everybody does, you're going to get the same results, results as everybody. everybody. And, and in life, life that's, that's not, not so good. 40% of American males get diagnosed with cancer. The divorce rate, 50%. I read a crazy stat about how many Americans over 35 have a dollar in savings. Like, I don't want normal. I want to be exceptional, abnormal. You have to do the regular and this stuff. You got to do the extra layer. You got to play a 10 inning game. Everybody's playing a nine inning game. Build your life resume means 
Make yourself interesting. The more you experience, the more you can offer. Sign up for races, go to events, learn something new, learn a skill, jump in cold water, go into the, into the office and have something to talk about that's like, well, that's really, that's really interesting. And I thought you were an introvert. I can't believe you would do something like that. I am, I did, but I decided to do it. Your life resume is your body of work. It's the things people can't take away from you, even time. Time can strip you of things. Time strips you of your dreams. You don't act, time will get you. You don't take urgency, time will get you, man. Maybe you get sick, you get hurt, you gotta take care of someone that's sick or hurt, it's not the right time. And then all of a sudden you can't do what your dreams, what you love to do. Action kills time. So you wanna act on, your, on, on stuff that you wanted to do, you wanna act on it now, and you wanna start to build what I call as your life resume. The things that you love to do or always wanted to do with the people you wanted to do them most. You do that simultaneously, it makes you more interesting, more compelling. It makes you attractive on a job interview. It makes you attractive for a promotion. It's contagious, it's infectious. And last, I mentioned on it briefly, freak the freaker. What does that mean? Do the unexpected. When I say play a 10 inning game, send thank you letters when they don't expect it. When you're on a podcast, if you're on a podcast, usually the podcaster sends you a thank you note. You send them a thank you note for the opportunity. You send them a note. When I was growing up, sleeping on those couches, my marketing plan, 10 letters a day, handwritten letters. I sent 3,000 in the age of 21 to 22, 3,000 handwritten letters to anybody that would listen. You know, the people that didn't expect it, the waiter, the host of the restaurant, like I cared the most. And I still hope that I care the most when I show up. Back to my dad. My dad grew up in a, in a family where his father was, uh, get, uh, what my grandfather was one of 12, had 12 brothers and sisters, six died before the age of two. He was gassed in World War I. Uh, and the U.S. Army survived, grew up in Brooklyn, where he lived with three generations of my family. My, my father, his father, his great, his, my dad's great grandfather. They lived all, and they opened a paint shop. They all lived in one spot. If we were born 100 years ago, we would live where we were born. Our platform would be our community. That's where we would be. We didn't travel, right? If you were born in California, you lived in California, man. If you were born in Brooklyn, you lived in Brooklyn. Well, 100 years ago in, in 1920, we were flying around and resettling. Now we live here, our parents live here, our brother lives here, our college roommates live here. Like we got a lot of breath, but platform starts under your roof. It starts in your roots. It starts with taking care of your parents, taking care of the people closest to you and sharing that enthusiasm, that caring um, across all your channels. It's how you show up. It's how you treat people. It's your generosity, it's your impact. And that's what Pete Vargas did with this group this week. You're gonna hear from some amazing speakers. You're gonna hear from some talented individuals that have scaled businesses. You're gonna hear from people that are philanthropic. You're gonna hear from people that have done it multiple different ways, but I guarantee you, man, all of them started with their own story. They started with their own platform, building their own story, like you're the business plan. You're the business plan. It starts with you and how you show up, how you treat people and how you care about things. So have a great week. Um, really, you know, these lectures that you're gonna hear, these talks, um, if there's one thing that resonates per speaker, you know, that like, yeah, you know, that, that I'm gonna have a hometown restaurant. This made sense. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write three, spend three minutes a day and really, I'm gonna DM people, you know, all, all these things that I just talked about. There's, there's one, one thing, thing there, there that, that resonates. resonates. I'm, gonna I'm gonna go, go where the action is at, you know, if, if it's one, one tool for all these speakers, then this is a, a, a really meaningful time. This is a really a good time well spent. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Pete, for this amazing opportunity. Um, I don't know if we're doing any Q&A or how you want to handle this.
But hey, Jess, thank you so much, man. I think I think uh, we're gonna try to have you hang for backstage. We'll see. I know you have flights and stuff like that. We're no, gonna no, see. Good. Okay, we're gonna have you hang for backstage, guys. Give some love to Jesse. So give some love. Give some love. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, everywhere. Drop a bunch of comments backstage. Give some love. Thank y'all. That is a guy that I have a lot of respect for. Like one of the. Let me tell you the thing I love about Jesse's platform. I want to tell you the, the thing I love about Jesse's platform more than anything else. And he doesn't know how much he's influenced me in this. He creates experiences. So much so that he's had me think about my family, my wife, my kids, my, my friends. friends. And since in, in knowing Jesse, Jesse, I've created more experiences in my life than I did before, before knowing Jesse. Jesse experiences last a lifetime, man. They last forever. My kids will thank me for those. My wife will thank me for those. Like, like it, he's made a profound impact on my life and on the lives of lots of people. And I'm so grateful for him. And he's gonna be with us backstage. Guys, let me tell you the genesis of why we're here. Let me tell you the genesis of why you're here. And all of you joining us backstage, we're gonna do a special training tonight for you. We had tech issues because of the reach of platform tour. This tour this week will reach millions of people. Millions of people will be, will be exposed to this this week. And we had some technical difficulties. And so we're going to do something special for you. So be looking in your email, but we're still going to go backstage with Jesse, myself, and our next guest here in just a second. But I want to give you the two minute version of why I do what I do. Jesse said, you are, the, you are the brand, you are the story, you are the business plan. Well, my story was the fact that I, I could not stand my dad. I hated my dad. My dad did a lot of negative things to me as a young kid, both physically and verbally. And my grandmother in seventh grade took me away from my dad because of the things that he did to me. And a lot of you know the story that when I was 23 years old, when I was 23 years old, the, fa the father of the first girl killed at Columbine back in 1999 came and spoke at my church. I was a youth pastor. I had grown the largest church per capita, the largest youth group in the United States per capita. I had 800 kids coming to my church on a Wednesday night in a town of 15,000 because of powerful speakers that would come in and share their messages with my kids. And one of those people that came and shared his message was the father of the first girl killed at Columbine back in 1999. She knew what she stood for. She wrote a paper one month before she was killed called My Ethics, My Codes of Life. And she stood for compassion in life. And when she died, her dad read her journals, her diaries. And her diaries talked about all of these stories where she found opportunity to bring compassion into situations, circumstances, events, and people. She knew what she stood for. And she represented that and demonstrated that to the world, just like all of these speakers this week, but it's like you. And so as this man shared her story and said, parents, you have no idea how long you have left on this earth with your kids. Go tell them how much you love them tonight or ask them for forgiveness. When I was 23 years old, my dad heard that speaker. He went home and he wrote me a letter and he said, I'm sorry for the father I've been. Here my son is having an impact on hundreds of kids' lives and I, haven't, I can't have an impact on my only son's life. I'm asking you for a second chance to do things right and he told me for the first time in a decade how much he loved me. Nothing worked up until that point, but finally somebody this platform, somebody's message worked. And literally, I got to share my dad's redemption story on a stage of 30,000 people a couple of years ago with my dad in the audience hearing me for the first time talk about the father he was versus the father he is today. An incredible father. But what many of you have never heard the story is that in seventh grade, eighth grade, as I started stepping, stepping in, in and my, and my grandmother, grandmother took me in away, away from, from my dad, dad and, and I started stepping, stepping into high school, school, my friends started inviting me to church. I didn't know what church was, but I got invited. And I heard this guy speak. And he talked about his faith. He talked about his family. He talked about football. 
I'm a diehard Dallas Cowboys fan. And one of my best friends is Tony Avizano. I'm a diehard Cowboys fan. And he talked about the possibilities of what life could look like. And I'm this young kid who comes from this dysfunctional family. This is what I stand for this week. This is why I want you to build your platform because you have no idea who you are impacting. As Emmett Smith shared this message to this lost eighth and ninth grade little boy who was so frustrated with his dad and his mom and the things that they had created in my life, what Emmett Smith showed me was a possibility that existed for me as a husband one day, now being married to my wife 20 years, as a father, four beautiful kids, in my career and becoming the best in the world. Emmett Smith got to share a message with that he has no idea he shared and made a deep, profound impact on me. He's actually the man that led me to T.D. Jakes, who a few weeks ago when I was at the Potter's house, T.D. Jakes honored me and my kids for being a powerful person making a difference in this world. Emmett Smith had no idea 20, 20, 30, 30, 30 years ago of something him sharing out of his mouth, making a difference in this young kid's life and literally a piece of who I am today. And the funny story I share all of the time, if you wanna know at least two of the digits in any of my passwords, any, 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 the digits 22 are literally in every single one of them. I enjoyed watching him on the field.